الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله أيها الأحبة A question was asked, and may Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala bless us and bless you and forgive us and forgive you. <clears throat> a brother is leading a small group of brothers and raising funds to open a Salafi masjid in our locality. I want to support the masjid for visioning a Salafi masjid, but have spoken with him over the phone and issues pertaining to Minhaj principles and how he plans on regulating the masjid. The below is some observations from his life experience and plans on some ways of visioning and administering a Salafi masjid. First statement, we are poor, we need money to use wisdom and Ahl bida need to come to the masjid. Uh, secondly, the people should be able to determine and make up their minds about the truth. And the evidence he used when Adam was told to not eat from the tree, he ate from it by warning people to not join these misguided groups, people to run to it and join these groups. Evidence of law is the one that guides. The third statement, only refute misguided groups when people seek clarification. This is from wisdom in attracting people to Salafia. Do not proceed with refutations unless people ask questions and inquire about these groups. And fourth statement, refuting falsehood in our Salafi masjid on the mimbar and openly refuting falsehood constantly is not from wisdom. It will make people flee from the truth. So basically, all in all, it almost seems like the statements are really uh, of basically two types. And, and almost really with one subject matter, and that is having wisdom <clears throat> when calling people to the haq. And there's no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to call with good preaching and hikmah and wisdom. So if you want to follow what your Lord Tabarak wa ta'ala says, and you want to follow the way in the madhab, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sunnah, and the madhab of Ahl sunnah, then you will proceed with this hikmah, this wisdom, and wanting guidance for the people and not scaring the people away and calling people with gentleness as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa wa Harun to go to Fir'aun and call him with qawlin laynin, with, a, with gentle speech. And that was Fir'aun. So we have even more right to call one another with gentleness and wisdom. Because that's the asal of da'wah. These are principles of da'wah. If you want to call people to da'wah, of course you have to have wisdom. And this is with the mushrikeen and disbelievers in Allah. So what about your brothers and sisters from Islam? So no doubt, Bi'idnillah ta'ala, that what I would advise in general is that if you have issues with what the individuals are saying that you wish to support, then you seek further clarification. And that you will not be held responsible for this. Because the masajid al-lillah fala tad'u ma'allahi ahada. The masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're the responsibility of the believers. And we only, we support them because they're the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the places in which we worship Allah azza wa jal alone. So for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you know or you assume that the usul of these individuals is the usul of Ahl sunnah you are not responsible for every single detail that they're going to do. And there is no place that's going to be perfect, especially if you do not have control of what's going on as far as the administration. There will be things they do that you may not agree with. Of course, you don't want to support anything that leads to bid'ah. But of course, but in addition to that, or more importantly, is it needs to be a caller of the sunnah, that they're calling to the book in the sunnah. And if they make mistakes, 
you help and correct your brothers. Cooperate in, in piety and righteousness and do not cooperate in enmity and hatred and, of, and, 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 and wickedness. So <clears throat> my advice is that you should clarify with your brothers, sit down with them if you can, especially before you put your money involved in this project and get clarified what you need to be clarified. As far as these statements, uh, if they mean, for example, the second statement, the people should be able to determine and make up their own minds about the truth. So they're going to have ahla haq wa ahla batl. No then you don't want to support a project like that, if, if possible. That you don't want to be a part of someone who is throwing away the principles of Ahl Sunnah. And they say, well, this day we're going to have the people of Tasawwuf. Tomorrow we have Ashidi. Uh, we want to give a platform to the Tekfiris. You know, everyone needs to come in and we'll let the people decide. No, you don't want to be a part of that because that is batil. That's a minhaj batil. A minhaj, a methodology was based on falsehood. It doesn't have any, it's not connected with the minhaj of the Salaf. So if Ahl Sunnah has the power and the control of the masjid, then of course they want to propagate the Sunnah. But that does not negate. It does not go against having wisdom. At all. So don't be, don't think that because something is supposed to be a, a masjid Salafi or a masjid of Ahl Sunnah, that they shouldn't have wisdom. La, that in and of itself means that they have wisdom. Because that is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And that is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala calls and orders to. And we know the base qa'id is what? Al-Ama yufid al-wujub. Wa-Nahi yufid al-Tahreem. That when there's a commandment in, in the book of Allah, or the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the asal of that command is that it's an obligation. So if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands you to, to have good preaching, and commands you to have wisdom, then it's an obligation upon you in the base origin of that, because of that command, to have wisdom and to have good preaching. And so that means you, sh you, you must have wisdom in your da'wah. So we don't want to throw away the principles. There should be no compromising the principles of Ahl Sunnah. But there should be calling with wisdom and good preaching and good manners. And... Another point I want to mention is that also, and although this person is not from the admin, that you don't want to be a masjid in which you prohibit people from coming to the masjid. Even if they're a person that's a soul for whatever, they have a right to worship Allah and they have the right to hear the haq, but they should not be the speakers. They should not be in control of the da'wah. We don't let them speak, but if they want to come, then ta'alu ila kalimat. Come to the word and let's come to a common ground and a common base, which is the book and the sunnah. But they are not allowed to control the da'wah. They're not allowed to, to, to uh, be in charge or, or what have you, but rather it should be ahl sunnah. But as far as restricting and saying, ahi, what is your minhaj as you, as you get in the door? And <clears throat> some of the nightmare experiences I've heard in the UK that are just unbelievable that someone would, you know, an imam, he goes to the wrong masjid. And the youngsters step to him like he's a child and say, what are you doing here? Because they regard him as a hisbi. This is very strange that these kind of things happen. And that is not from Salafia. What if the man, in their eyes, if he's a hisbi, and he's going to seek the truth there? He's coming to gain good. He's coming to make sulh, rectification for something that's wrong. So we have to be careful about being exclusive. And we don't want to fall into the traps of some of the people who came before us who introduced bid'ah into the religion under the guise of Salafiyah, saying it was Salafi. But it wasn't. Salafi is the haq. But some people misuse and abuse the, the principles of Ahl Sunnah. As far as refuting 
uh, falsehood, openly refuting falsehood constantly. It's not from wisdom. No, you, you must refute falsehood. But the point is, is having wisdom that you don't beat the people down their throat. The people need to learn about the basics of the religion. They need to know Tawheed. They need to know their manners and akhlaq of Islam. They need to know Adab. They need to have Tarbiyah. They need to have all these educative principles and know the usul of Islam and the usul, the usul of, uh, the, the arkan al-Islam, arkan al-Iman. But they don't need to come in and, and be involved in the fitna of Abu Hassan Ma'rabi or something crazy like this and the people don't even speak the language. That people are learning the wrong thing. So the tarbiyah is very important in any community. But as far as openly refuting falsehood, that, that is, that's the haq. But as our Sheikh, Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he mentioned, and you'll see this, if you follow up Imam, I mean, this alam, if you follow him up, and if you follow many of the Mashaykh, I'm just giving an example because I know personally, and I've heard him say this personally, that he says, I usually don't like to mention Mayanin, specific individuals. But if it becomes necessary to do so, I will do so. And what did he say? If it becomes necessary. So it doesn't mean you have to every single time on the minbar, they need to put this in the people's face because the people won't come to that. Even the regular Muslims who just want to worship Allah, the elders and stuff, they don't want to hear about that. They don't know about that. But if it becomes necessary, then you deal with those issues. And this is a problem of tarbiyah. If you go study in Saudi Arabia, in fact, with any of the Mashiach, even some of the most controversial ones who are known for speaking a lot of, about Mubtadiyah and speaking about individuals, Sheikh Rabi, for example, or Sheikh uh, Ubaidah Jabri, or Sheikh uh, Abdullah Bukhari, or whoever, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, okay, even in their study circles, and I spent more time with Sheikh Ubaid than any of the other ones, but but I will say that in the times that I've sat in the durus of any of the other those other mashayikh or visited in their home like Sheikh Rabi or what have you, it wasn't, they were teaching books. They were teaching Umta Tahkam. They were teaching the principles of Ahl Sunnah. And then when it was necessary, and yes, some of them speak more about others than others. But it wasn't like 24-7 that that's what they're speaking. They were teaching. They were giving us tarbiyah. So even those who may have controversy around them, and be known for entering into those abwab, akthar min ghayrihim, that they teach. And they raise their students up as well. So why is it that we have people in the West, and otherwise, who spend time not teaching the people their Islam, but teaching them how to stay away from this one and refute that one and get involved in this one? And how to practice hisbia? Step A, be a hisbi. Step two, only listen to us. Step three, may refute the rest of the world. So this is a very dangerous thing. So we have to be very careful uh, with regards to all these issues. So again, this is my advice: is that find out, get clarification from the imam or whoever's involved in this project, so that way you feel more comfortable and. That, of course, they should not be proponents of, of battle. You don't feel comfortable with these statements. So it requires seeking clarification. And I will also advise you, if my answer is not sufficient for you, to go to other students of knowledge or go to some of the scholars. See if they can get someone to ask this question for you to somebody you trust from the ulama sunnah to get appropriate detail with nasus from the book and the sunnah. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.